Is he all that you need? Yes. Really? Yes. All right. Because in him, we're blessed. Amen. You have him, you have everything you need. And, uh, I'm going to jump right into the Word this morning. Several weeks ago, I began teaching on uh, the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, a lot of time has passed since then. We've had a lot going on. We've had the CMA come. We've had missionaries and, and different things. So uh, it's been probably a month since I started. That being the case, I'm going to go ahead and start from the beginning because I saw a few of you sleeping anyway. And, uh, we, uh, we know you didn't hear anything I said. Uh, hopefully that's not true. But, uh, and, and hopefully I will be sharing from a little different angle uh, this time. And uh, there, there's, you know, believe it or not, there have been some messages I have preached that were worth preaching twice, some even three times. And believe it or not. So Cheryl said, anytime I do that, it never comes out the same anyway. So, uh, uh, but actually, I've studied a little bit more and I've added a few more things. Uh, that I want to share with you concerning uh, the gifts of the Spirit. And if you have your worship folder, uh, if you didn't get one, make sure you get one before you leave so you'll know what's going on at Crosswalk Fellowship. But you'll see I put on the top there, I put down uh, our, what we're going to be talking about for the next three weeks. Uh, they're they're uh, right at the very top of your worship folder. And you'll see that there are nine supernatural gifts and the three that we've already looked at are what are called revelation gifts that's what we looked at about a month ago but there are also uh, verbal gifts and there are power gifts revelation gifts which we'll be looking at today include the gift of the word of knowledge the gift of the word of wisdom and the discerning of spirits these are all things that we get by divine revelation from God. Okay? Then you have what are known as verbal gifts. Three of them are verbal gifts, which are uh, prophecy, the gift of prophecy, the gift of uh, tongues, diverse tongues, and the gift of interpretation of tongues. Then you have the final three, which are called power gifts. And these have to do with power, action, there's faith, there's healing, and there's the gift of miracles. So those are your nine supernatural gifts of the Spirit. The reason I say supernatural because the Bible also talks about other gifts, administration gifts, and things of that nature. So that's why I keep referring to these as supernatural gifts because these are uh, uh, not God-given abilities, but these are supernatural gifts that come directly from the Holy Spirit. So, today we're going to uh, begin with the gift of uh, the Word of Knowledge. And this gift is probably manifested more so than any of the other gifts. The gift of the Word of Knowledge. We understand that God knows everything. Do you believe that this morning? God knows everything. And since He knows everything, and our knowledge is limited, it's a pretty uh, obvious that we need this gift operating in our lives if we want to move beyond our own abilities. Amen? So our part in this gift is to recognize the operation of the Word of Knowledge in our lives. We have to recognize it. You may have received the Word of Knowledge and not even realize that you've received a word of knowledge. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a moment. And some of you may not even be aware that these gifts exist. You may not really know anything about it. You know, Paul said, Brother, I would not have you ignorant concerning these gifts. And if Paul doesn't want us ignorant, I don't want us ignorant. Amen. Therefore, we're going to talk about it so we can understand what the gifts of the Spirit are. How can you recognize this gift? Okay, first of all, in order for it to be supernatural, it has to be something you did not know previously. 
something that you're really not even capable of knowing, all of a sudden, you just know. You just know. The Holy Spirit comes upon you and imparts that knowledge to you. And all of a sudden, something you didn't know, now you know. The Holy Spirit tells you something God knows that you didn't know. Now, the last time we talked about this, I gave an illustration of a Bible college president who was adding on to the campus. They were in a building program, and they were going to build a, a structure. And uh, the architect came up to him and said, you know, I know we said we could do it in this amount of time for this amount of money. However, we did not realize this situation right here, and now it's going to take X amount of uh, weeks or months to do it longer than originally uh, thought, and it's going to cost X amount of dollars more than we had budgeted. And the president is not an engineer, he's not an architect, he really doesn't have any knowledge whatsoever, but all of a sudden, God gave him a word of knowledge. Gave him a word he didn't even know what the word meant. And he says, I don't know if this means anything to you, but what if you uh, uh, did this and this and he used that word? And uh, like again, he really was just talking out of his head. He didn't even know what he was talking about. But that engineer said, well, let me think about that. And he comes back to him. He says, what school did you go to? And uh, he said, well, I don't know anything about it. God just told me and he gave me that word. And he says, well, you know, if we do it that way, I think we can stay right on track. You see, that's a word of knowledge. A supernatural word. He gave this president of this college a word that, that, that helped and saved and, and uh, was a better steward of God's money uh, to build onto this college, to this campus. So that is one example of a, a, a word of knowledge. It's a supernatural knowledge. It's not your own knowledge. It's beyond many times your own intelligence. How many say I need some of that? Amen. <laughs> it, can, it can include solving a problem. You know, it can also include revealing a sickness in somebody that God wants to heal. Now, I'm sure you've seen this before if you watched maybe television, uh, ministry, or been in a, a church, and, and all of a sudden someone says, uh, God says someone in here has a problem of pain right here. You know, it comes every other day, and uh, God says He wants to heal you of that pain. And then if that's you, uh, God wants to heal you right now. Come on, let's pray, let's believe God. And then that person says, well, that's me. Now, you know, some people say, well, you know, I mean, that could be anybody because surely somebody here has a pain and he's... And, you know, sometimes that may be the case. People may be doing it in their own. But I tell you, God works that way as well. And whenever it's God, too, when that person comes up, they're going to walk away pain-free. Amen? You see, so uh, God can do that. He can just, you know, say, how want to heal so-and-so and as the anointing's flowing in the service. And, and God can do supernatural things that way. You know, God can give you a word of knowledge, and I think I might get a big amen here. I know I can certainly attest to this. God can give you knowledge when you lose your car keys. He can give you a word of knowledge where they are. Yeah. I don't have any times, not lately. I've been doing pretty well. It's been a long time since I've lost my keys. But I can remember many times losing my keys and just frantically looking around the house. And finally I say, God, where are my keys? And all of a sudden, look behind this. Because out of nowhere, boom, look behind here. And so I go look behind there and guess what? There are my keys. Well, that's just a coincidence. Well, I heard on the, the TV this morning, we always have a little bit of a, a preaching on in, in the mornings while we're getting ready and what have you. And uh, someone said, you know, when you pray, you seem to have coincidences. And when you don't pray, you don't have them. Yeah. <laughs> so call it what you will. I didn't know where they were. I prayed, God gave me a word, and, and, and I acted on that word, and I found them. Amen? Hallelujah. And hopefully I won't need that word again for a while uh, concerning my keys. Yes. He may have given you a word. He may give you a word that will bring somebody to Christ. You know, you say, you know, God told me that whenever you were young, whatever it may be, and that would just open their hearts up. And, and you got their attention. You know, you, they're like, wow, how did you know that? God told me. Well, what else did He tell me? 
He told me that Jesus died for your sins and if you'll trust in Him as your Savior, you'll go to heaven. See, sometimes it just takes a supernatural gift to soften somebody's heart to be willing to listen to what you have to say to them. You know, it could be God will give you a word that will just bring uh, uh, comfort to someone. But it's, it's a word that you didn't really know. It's something you didn't really know that God showed you or told you and gave you that word of knowledge and you share that with them and it's, oh, I just really needed to hear that. You weren't planning on saying that. You had no idea you were going to say that. But God implanted that word into you and you shared it and you brought comfort to somebody. See, that's several ways that the word of knowledge can work. And God can give you a word of knowledge anytime and for any situation. It can be a word for you. It can be a word for someone else. But God, if you listen, God will, will work through the gift of the word of knowledge. It can be used for witnessing. Some people call that power evangelism. It's whenever you use the supernatural gifts of the Holy Spirit while you're sharing the Gospel with people. Jesus, for example, when He was speaking to the, the woman at the well, do you remember that? You know, He went up to the Samaritan woman and, and uh, He says about her husband, she says, I do not have a husband. He said, you, you have well said you don't have a husband. You've had five and one you're now living with is not your husband. Wow, you must be a prophet. What was it? It was a word of knowledge. You know, Jesus worked by the power of the Holy Spirit, just like you and I work by the power of the Holy Spirit. When Jesus left heaven, He left His deity part there. He came as a man. And he didn't start doing the work of the ministry until the Holy Spirit descended upon Him. He went into the wilderness and He came out by the power of the Holy Spirit and began to do many mighty signs and wonders. That's why Jesus can say, the works that I did, or I do, you shall do also, and greater works than these you shall do, because I'm going back to the Father. Why? Because He did them under the power of the Holy Spirit, just like you and I will do them under the power of the Holy Spirit. So what happened? She ended up coming to the Lord and went out and became a, a, an evangelist. Come here, a man that told me all things. And she was excited. As he spoke a word, she knew that was supernatural. It softened her heart to receive exactly what he wanted to do for her. Hallelujah. So can you see where you might need this gift operating in your life? Nothing spooky about that, is there? There's nothing wrong, listen now, there's nothing wrong with desiring spiritual gifts. As a matter of fact, we're instructed to do that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 1 it says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. We need the gifts of the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish the task that God has set before us. There is a supernatural power available for us to do what God wants us to do. So how does God give us knowledge supernaturally? I believe the most common way is just an inner knowing. It's an inner knowing. It's kind of like a, you ever heard somebody frame a light came on. You know, it's just like all of a sudden, oh, there it is. You know, you just see it all of a sudden. You, you know it all of a sudden. Uh, you, you just know something. A couple examples, I may have used these last time. As a matter of fact, the Haney's uh, that were here last week talked about this a little bit. And I just want to share this because it kind of incorporates a couple different gifts. But uh, when I went to Wisconsin, as, as uh, they were sharing, and, and I went to pray for, for Chris there when I first got there, uh, I was praying for her. All of a sudden, I knew. Everybody say knew. knew. I knew. I didn't hope. But I knew God was going to heal her. I knew it. It just, it just came to me. God's going to do this. A light is just like, I could not help but tell her, tonight she's having trouble sleeping. She's had a major surgery, complications. She was not in a good place. And, and uh, I told her, I said, you're going to sleep like a baby, and when you wake up in the morning, you're going to be healed. I'm not sure exact words I used, but you're going to be healed. 
Well, along with the gift of knowledge was the gift of faith. I had supernatural faith it was so. I told her and I just knew it was so. I had no doubts at that point. I had no doubts that was going to happen. See, that was beyond my knowledge. And, to be honest, it was beyond my faith to step out like that. But, I knew it was going to happen. Now, I'll be honest with you, after all that was said and done, I walked out of the house and I'm walking toward my car and thinking, what did I just say? <laughs> but you see, that was because I was operating under the unction of the Holy Spirit. He told me he was going to do it. I knew it, so I told her what he said. And then I, that supernatural faith, I just said it's going to be. And, and, and the next morning, or she slept like a baby, she said. And she was completely 100% healed the next day. Talk about a speedy recovery. It was supposed to take weeks and weeks and weeks for her to heal from the surgery. Next day, she was at church, and she was... Matter of fact, it was kind of funny because pray prayed for her. She, she fell into the power of God, started giggling like a schoolgirl. You know, I mean, it was, and that never happened to her. It never happened to that church. And I think they're going, who is it? What's going on with this guy? He's one of those. <laughs> but it wasn't anything to do with me. God just wanted to do something there. Amen. Hallelujah. Then before I left Wisconsin, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole story again. But we had a decision to make whether to stay or come back. We wanted to come back close to home because of our parents were both uh, fighting cancer and uh, we wanted to spend more time with them. And we prayed. And I didn't want to be out of God's will. So I prayed. And I, was, I mean, I was having a tough time. You know, should I go? Shouldn't I go? And it was, I mean, I was praying so hard about making me sick or it didn't make me sick. And I said, this, God, I, you got to speak to me. you got to let me know. And uh, the next morning I woke up and I tell you, church, if you knew where I was at, the turmoil we were in trying to make this decision, you'll know this is supernatural. All of a sudden, the next day, I just knew what to do. God said, go. He gave me knowledge that's what I was supposed to do. And, uh, and, and we left with His blessing. You see. So, uh, these are just some of the ways God can work through the word of knowledge. You know, it may come in a picture. God may just show you a picture. I know there's been times I was praying for people, and God would just show me a picture of something, you know, like... Uh, you know, and you just share that, you know, I see you starting a business. Now, don't ever go off and do something just because a preacher told you to do it. But, you know, what if you're praying? Lord, should I start this business or, or should I not? I need to hear from you. But well, God may give me a word of knowledge to share with you to confirm what He's been speaking to you. And usually that's what a word like that is, is confirmation. You know, I'm not here to direct your life. Amen. And no evangelist is here to direct your life. People have gotten messed up doing that sometimes. Yes. So it's got to be something that's confirming something God has been speaking to you. And so you go, oh wow, I need to hear that, you know. And then you go out and you have a successful business. Amen. So it could be in, in the form of, of pictures. Um, so there's, there's just these different ways that he can communicate that. The main thing is knowledge. Knowledge that you are not capable of knowing being communicated by God to you. That's really the definition of it right there. I'll say that again. Knowledge that you're not capable of knowing being communicated by God to you. That is the gift of the word of knowledge. And this gift can help in so many ways. So naturally, we ought to desire it. Amen? And so, desire it. Say, God, I want the gift of the Word of Knowledge operating in my life. I'm open for you to do that through me. And just watch and see what God will do. Amen? Alright, well that's the first of the Revelation gifts. Let me just give you a hint. The next two are going to be a lot quicker. Okay. <laughs> we, we kind of talked about these already, especially these next two. Uh, I'm just going to kind of recap a little bit, refresh your memory. Uh, feel free to go to the website. EvansvilleCrosswalk.com and you can watch the other message in full there. But the other revelation gift is the gift of the Word of Wisdom. The Word of Wisdom will many times work alongside the gift of the Word of Knowledge. They kind of work hand in hand. 
basically, here's what you need to know about the word of wisdom. The wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge. Wisdom that God gives you is the ability to apply the knowledge that God gives you. You know, knowledge without wisdom can be dangerous. Amen? So you need the wisdom. We need supernatural wisdom sometimes. Do you know that your wisdom is limited? I don't care how wise you think you are. You know, Eric's a wise guy. But it doesn't matter. Amen? Wisdom is the ability to apply the knowledge that God gives you. In 1 Corinthians 12.8 it says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit. The gift of wisdom is the wisdom of God. It is a supernatural impartation. It's not natural. You can't earn it. It can only be received from God. And it will, not, it will let you know how to do something. It's not the what to do, but it's the how to do. Okay? This is not referring to natural wisdom. You know, men can be wise without supernatural help. And we can have some wisdom. Some are wiser than others. Amen? I mean, there are some folks that know how to make investments. They're just wise. They, they just have that sense about them to know how to make investments. Or whatever the case may be. There's, there's, there's that natural kind of wisdom. It's not even the, the wisdom that God gives us on a day-to-day -day, uh, uh, basis. You know, it's, that's, that's God giving you wisdom, but it's not the supernatural wisdom that it's talking about here. This is a wisdom that just falls on us. It's not our own ability. It's, it's beyond our comprehension kind of wisdom. It may be wisdom to solve a difficult matter. It may be wisdom to defeat the intentions of the enemy. You know, sometimes something can look like the right thing to do, but God will give you the wisdom to say, no, I'm not doing that. And everybody's, why aren't you doing that? That's the right thing. It's obvious. You can see that's the right thing to do. I don't know. God just said don't do it. So you don't do it. Then later on you find out the enemy will set the trap for you. When the gift of wisdom is manifested through you, you'll know that it's not your own duty. That's how you know it's the gift of the word of wisdom. Then, I told you to be quicker. Then the third and final is the discerning of spirits. Now, if I were to give you the definition of this gift, it would be to supernaturally discern of what spirit something or someone are of. Let me say it again. To supernaturally dis discern of what spirit something or someone are of. This is a, a, the gift to recognize if something is of man, of the enemy, or of God. Now we can discern some just with what God has shown us. Uh, you know, we're told to test the spirits, and we talked about that last time, so I'm not going to go into that in detail today but but it goes beyond our our natural uh, or what we're told to do in testing the spirits i mean that's stuff you can look at the person watch a person's life and you can discern you know what spirit is working in their life you can tell if they're a person that just kind of does things on their own you can tell if they're being led by god or you can tell if they're being led by the enemy you can just discern that uh with just by your spirit but this is supernatural gift. This is where it just, again, just comes at you. You know it wasn't your own doing. You know it's beyond your ability. Amen? There's no saying that says all that glitters is not gold. And, and that's so the truth. Just because it seems right does not mean that it's right. And although there are things we can do again to determine such things by, like, like I said, testing the spirits, uh, this is given directly from the Holy Spirit. Not sharing an illustration, I'll, I'll go ahead and just kind of uh, remind you of that. But many, 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 many years ago, in the city of Evansville, there was an evangelist that came to town. This evangelist seemed like a mighty man of God. 
He was doing great things. He was a great orator. He he was uh, uh, he was charismatic. Uh, you know, people were flocking to see him. I went. He really seemed powerfully anointed. He gave prophetic words. At the same time, he was sleeping with different women in the church. He was he was uh, taking people for their money. He was doing lots of different things behind the scenes. Eventually, it came out. I mean, you know, poor pastor. He was, you know, he was dubbed just like everybody else. He was taken in. See, all that glitters is not gold. We need the gift of discerning the spirits. He was eventually found out and, and not ran out of town, but I think he was ready to go whenever it was found out. Amen. So, we need that discerning of spirits. Now, after having said that, let me say this again. Some folks think they have the gift of discerning of spirits. But in reality, what they have is the gift of suspicion. Well, I don't like their personality. Well, they won't say that. They say they got a bad spirit. There's an evil spirit at work in them. When actually it's just they don't like personality. You know, you're not going to like everybody's personality. That doesn't mean you can't love them. doesn't mean you can't care for them. It just means maybe they're not your favorite person to have a conversation with. And that's okay. But it doesn't mean... They have a devil. Even if they're, you know, you have what they call alpha personalities. Well, sometimes that will rub in the wrong way with another alpha personality. Or, you know, if you've ever done the temperaments and all that, you, you know that there are certain people who get along better than other people. And, and so that doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean they have a demon working in them. And But a lot of people who want to be super spiritual say, oh, I just sense a real bad spirit in them. There's an evil at work in that person, you know. And... That, that's not the case. And that's not the gift of discerning of spirits. Amen? Some may look at them and say, uh, oh, they got beady eyes. <laughs> so I know they're not a God. You know, but, but, but some people can try to get on this spiritual plateau and like they know things that other people don't know. But don't ever be taken in just because they tell you that that's spiritual doesn't mean they're that spiritual. Amen? But there are gifts, and they do operate in believers. And we are to desire those gifts. Amen? Amen. So these are the revelation gifts. Next week, I think what I have down next week, the uh, power gifts. So we'll talk about the power gifts next week. Amen? I'm going to close a little differently here very quickly. Does anybody have any questions concerning revelation gifts? Just give you an opportunity if you have any questions concerning these three gifts. Well, I did a good job then, didn't I? <laughs> All right. Well, let's pray. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you are so good. We thank you that you have equipped us for every good work. And Lord, I know that sometimes you want to work through us and we just don't have our eyes open. We, we don't really see where it's you working. Lord, I just pray and I, I believe on behalf of us all. Lord, let us be open for you to work through the way you want to work through us. Father, help us to reach out and be a blessing to all those that are around us. And Father, we're careful to give you all the praise and all the glory for all that you're doing. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 God bless you.